A Russian pilot claims his Su-57 Felon locked onto an American F-35 during a close encounter over international waters. But the aftermath of this incident reveals a shocking reality about these two advanced fighters that Russian officials are desperately trying to hide. In this video, we're exposing the true story behind what happens when Russia's premier jet faces American stealth technology. The dramatic capabilities gap between these fighters goes far beyond what propaganda suggests. We'll analyze why this matchup isn't close at all and reveal exactly why Russian pilots avoid certain confrontations with their supposedly comparable fighter. The Russian giant, the Su-57's deceptive dimensions and appearance. Did you know that the Russian Su-57 Felon is a massive aircraft? When parked alongside America's F-35 Lightning II, the size difference is immediately striking. The Su-57 stretches nearly 66 feet in length with a wingspan of 46 feet, while the F-35 measures just 51 feet long with a 35-foot wingspan. These imposing dimensions are something Russian military officials proudly showcase as evidence of their technological might, a visual statement of power they emphasize at international military exhibitions. The contrast is striking, like comparing a bulky grizzly bear to a sleek panther. While Russia celebrates the Su-57's imposing silhouette, this size difference reveals a critical vulnerability in the world of stealth technology. The physics of radar detection follow an unforgiving principle. Larger aircraft inevitably produce larger radar returns, making them easier to detect on enemy screens. Consider this fundamental question. If you're designing something to remain hidden, would you create something massive or minimal? The answer is obvious. Each additional square foot of the Su-57 surface area reflects more radar energy back to detection systems, compromising its stealth capabilities from the start. American engineers embraced this principle from day one. The F-35's compact profile represents a deliberate design choice to minimize radar signature, not a compromise, but a strategic decision based on the physics of stealth technology. Russia seems to compensate for this fundamental disadvantage with spectacular air shows, featuring the Su-57 performing impressive acrobatic maneuvers. These demonstrations often showcase breathtaking Pugachev's Cobras, flat spins, and other advanced aerobatic feats that look amazing on camera. Yet military experts note a profound irony. These maneuvers matter little when the aircraft can be detected and targeted from 150 miles away before the pilot even knows they're in danger. When examining technical specifications, the disadvantage becomes even more apparent. Radar cross-section RCS, essentially quantifies an aircraft's visibility to radar. While exact figures remain classified, defense analysts estimate the F-35's frontal RCS at approximately 0.0015 square meters, roughly the size of a marble. This tiny radar signature allows it to penetrate heavily defended airspace virtually undetected. The Su-57, by contrast, is estimated to have a frontal RCS between 0.1 and 1.0 square meters, potentially 1,000 times larger than the F-35. This represents a catastrophic flaw for an aircraft marketed as a stealth fighter. Modern air defense systems like the American Patriot or Russian Russia's own S-400 could detect a Su-57 at distances exceeding 100 miles, while an F-35 might approach within just a few dozen miles before being noticed. This matters tremendously in actual combat. Modern air warfare operates on the principle of first look, first shot, first kill, where detecting your opponent first creates an overwhelming advantage. Despite Russian propaganda claiming otherwise, the Su-57's size creates a physical limitation that no amount of radar-absorbing material can fully overcome. Russian media frequently publishes impressive photographs of the Su-57, alongside claims about its superior stealth characteristics. But physics cannot be fooled by marketing. While the Su-57 incorporates some stealth features, labeling it a true stealth fighter comparable to the F-35 or F-22 contradicts its fundamental physical characteristics. The fatal design flaw, exposed turbines, and the myth of stealth. If the sheer size of the Su-57 already raises red flags about its stealth capabilities, there's an even more catastrophic design flaw that Russian engineers can't can't hide, no matter how hard they try. Picture a supposedly invisible aircraft with a component generating the same radar effect as turning on a lighthouse in the middle of a pitch black night. This is precisely the situation with the Russian fighter when we examine its air intakes. American engineers who designed the F-22 and F-35 spent countless hours obsessing over something that might seem trivial to the casual observer, the shape and configuration of engine air intakes. This wasn't merely an aesthetic choice. In stealth aircraft design, hiding the engine's turbine blades from 
radar detection is absolutely critical. Why? Because these metal fan blades spinning at high speed create massive radar returns that can betray an aircraft's position from dozens of miles away. The solution developed by American aerospace engineers was ingenious. S-shaped air ducts. These serpentine pathways allow air to flow into the engine while ensuring that radar waves cannot directly see the highly reflective turbine blades. The radar energy that enters the intake gets trapped in the curved duct, bouncing around until it's either absorbed or significantly weakened before exiting. But when we look at the Su-57, we find a shocking oversight. The Russian fighter lacks complete S-duct air intakes, leaving its compressor blades partially visible from the front. Like a powerful beacon broadcasting its location to everyone watching, those exposed turbine blades create enormous radar returns that completely undermine any other stealth features the aircraft might possess. This critical vulnerability connects directly to the aircraft's excessive size we discussed earlier. Both problems reveal how Russia sacrificed true stealth for other design priorities. The contrast with American designs is stark. Both the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II feature complex, carefully engineered S-ducts that completely shield their engine components from any direct radar line of sight. These meticulously designed Ducting systems represent decades of research and billions in development costs, investments that pay off in genuine stealth capability. Russian officials have attempted to downplay this critical flaw, claiming that the Su-57 incorporates special radar blockers and materials intended to absorb radar waves. However, Western aviation experts remain unconvinced. No amount of radar-absorbing material can fully compensate for the fundamental problem of exposed turbine blades. It's like trying to hide a spotlight by painting the outside of its housing black. The light still shines through. This design flaw undermines the entire stealth philosophy that supposedly guided the Su-57's development. A true fifth-generation stealth fighter must incorporate stealth as its foundational design principle, not as an afterthought or partial consideration. So why would Russia's aerospace industry leave such an obvious flaw in their flagship fighter? The answer likely lies in Russia's technological and industrial limitations. Creating effective EA ducts requires advanced manufacturing capabilities, sophisticated computer modeling, and extensive testing. Furthermore, the Russian aerospace industry has struggled significantly with the development of lighter-than-metal alloys and non-ferrous materials crucial for modern stealth aircraft, indicating a technological lag that directly impacts their ability to produce truly competitive designs. When Russian officials claim the Su-57 is a fifth-generation stealth fighter comparable to American jets, we must recognize that actions speak louder than words. No country with the genuine capability to properly hide engine turbine blades would choose not to do so in their premier fighter aircraft. This this suggests Russia simply couldn't overcome the engineering challenges required to implement proper S-Ducts despite understanding their importance. The truth on the battlefield, the Su-57 in Ukraine. While Russian propaganda showcases the Su-57's supposed battlefield prowess over Ukraine, the actions of their military tell a completely different story. Actions speak louder than words, and in no place is this more evident than in the skies over Ukraine. Unlike Israel, which has confidently deployed its F-35s in actual combat without hesitation, Russia keeps its Su-57s hiding safely within its borders. What devastating secret about this aircraft are they trying so desperately to protect? Russian state media has painted a glorious picture of the Su-57 Felon performing brilliantly in Ukraine, claiming impressive air-to-ground strikes against Ukrainian positions and showcasing technological superiority. The Kremlin's propaganda machine cultivates an image of their premier fighter jet dominating the battlefield and striking fear into Western military planners. But behind this carefully constructed narrative lies a revealing truth. In a moment that shattered the Kremlin's narrative, the British Ministry of Defense published an assessment that completely contradicts Russian claims. According to British intelligence, the Su-57 operate exclusively from the safety of Russian territory, launching long-range missiles without ever crossing into Ukrainian airspace, where they might face actual threats. This revelation exposes a profound disconnect between Russia's boastful claims and their operational caution. When Ukrainian forces activated their S-300 air defense systems near the border in March 2022, Russian Su-57s immediately retreated further inland rather than challenging these defenses, a telling reaction from an aircraft marketed as having advanced stealth capabilities. The Kremlin has adopted what military analysts describe as a risk-averse strategy with their supposed fifth-generation fighter. The numbers tell a critical part of this story. As of early 2023, Russia had only approximately 22 Su-57 units in active service, a tiny fraction compared to the hundreds of F-35s already deployed by the United States and its allies. While Russia announced plans to expand this fleet to 76 aircraft by 2028, military experts remain deeply skeptical about whether Russia's struggling airspace industry 
industry can achieve this goal under current sanctions. With such limited numbers, losing even a single Su-57 would represent a catastrophic public relations disaster for Moscow. Defense analyst Kazianis explained the stakes clearly. If a Su-57 were shot down over Ukraine, it would prove the plane is not truly a top-tier fighter and would effectively destroy any hope Russia has of selling this aircraft to international customers. The loss would expose weaknesses that Russian engineers have worked to conceal from potential buyers and Western intelligence agencies. This extreme caution stands in stark contrast to how Western nations deploy their advanced fighters. Israel demonstrates remarkable confidence in the F-35's capabilities by using it extensively in real-world combat operations. The Israeli Air Force regularly employs its F-35s in high-threat environments, showcasing trust in the aircraft's survivability and combat effectiveness. The British Defense Ministry's assessment reveals that the Su-57's operational limitations reflect a broader reluctance to risk advanced technology in combat situations. This reluctance is about protecting the carefully constructed myth of Russian technological parity with the West. Russia's dependence on Western components for the Su-57 further complicates matters. International sanctions have severely disrupted supply chains for critical electronic systems and specialized materials needed for the fighter's production. Without reliable access to these components, maintaining and expanding the Su-57 fleet becomes increasingly challenging. The inescapable conclusion is that Russia keeps its Su-57s far from danger because these aircraft simply cannot compete against modern air defense systems. If the Su-57 were truly the stealth fighter Russia claims, they would deploy it confidently against Ukrainian air defenses to demonstrate its superiority. Instead, they keep it at a safe distance, a tacit admission of the aircraft's fundamental vulnerabilities. The revealing accident. When the Su-57 crashed into reality, the cautious approach Russia takes with its Su-57s in Ukraine isn't just strategic reservation. It stems from a traumatic episode that shook the entire program to its core. While the Kremlin was busy promoting its fifth-generation fighter in December 2019, disaster struck in a way that Russian officials desperately tried to downplay but couldn't completely hide. A brand new Su-57 crashed catastrophically during what should have been a routine test flight. Picture this. A pilot at the control of Russia's most advanced fighter, suddenly feeling the aircraft become unresponsive as warning lights flash across the cockpit. In mere seconds, a routine flight transforms into a desperate struggle for survival. The aircraft plummets toward the Earth as the pilot makes the split-second decision to eject, parachuting to safety while watching Russia's technological pride crash into the ground below. This catastrophic failure happened mere days before this particular aircraft was scheduled for official handover to the Russian Air Force, a symbolic milestone meant to showcase Russia's technological prowess. The timing couldn't have been worse devastating a program that was finally gaining momentum after years of delays and setbacks. The investigation revealed a critical failure in the steering system caused the crash. This wasn't a simple malfunction. It exposed fundamental flaws in Russia's aerospace manufacturing process. The Su-57, one of only a handful existing at the time, was completely destroyed, forcing a comprehensive review of the entire program and delaying deliveries significantly. Military analysts highlight something far more concerning than a single faulty component. The accident exposed systematic quality control deficiencies throughout Russian aviation manufacturing. Each Su-57 essentially becomes a unique creation with its own peculiarities, making maintenance and reliability prediction extraordinarily difficult. The deeper you look into Russian aerospace production, the more alarming the picture becomes. Unlike the meticulously documented American jets, Russian aircraft manufacturing struggles with inconsistent quality standards. The contrast with American fighter development is striking.